North Carolina has an incredibly deep history in aviation, and certainly a big piece of that is the Wright brothers. It was 1903, they were able to lift off and maintain flight, and as some have said, it's 12 seconds that changed the world. 115 years later, it's amazing to think about where we're at. In 2013, our legislature started focusing on how we could integrate drones into the state. And they needed a group to really spearhead that integration. The natural place for it to fall was in the Department of Transportation. Education and training are a key focus for Division of Aviation, and uh, that is where we partnered with NC Public Safety Drone Academy. We offer a host of large scenario-based classes, so we'll actually take firemen, law enforcement, search and rescue, and put them in real-life scenarios. Everything on the truck exists in order to save a life and help somebody on their worst day. We've been flying drones at the Wake Forest Fire Department for about four years. The number one goal of the drone at a public safety scene is to provide some sort of actionable intelligence that would not otherwise be obtained. We got involved a few years ago to integrate drones into what we do with the Highway Patrol, which is collision reconstruction. The traditional methods would have been tape, wheel measurement devices, lasers or LIDAR scanners. The whole process to map a crash would take anything between three to five hours. Having the drone in the vehicle allows me to get to work right away. We can get a scene mapped in less than 30 minutes and we can open up the roads in less than an hour. Our environmental analysis unit has been able to use drones for herbicide spraying. So before we were able to use drones, we had to do traditional methods. We had a large number of people, a large number of man hours. Use of drones has definitely made the job safer with less effort. Another use that the environmental analysis unit is able to use drones for is assessing wetlands or other sensitive areas around construction projects. We're monitoring subaquatic vegetation to make sure that we're not doing any damage to it. Before we had drones, our environmental unit would monitor these areas by hand, which is very tedious and it was a long process. So we said, well, you know, well, why don't we put drones in the hands of our environmental unit, let them take them out, launch them off the boats, and collect this data. We embarked on a project to see how drones could be incorporated into airport inspections. They're looking at the pavement, lighting, obstructions like trees or anything off the ends of the runway in the approaches. It's more efficient, it's more effective. After aviation, the second most largely used mode of transportation is our rail. They were usually driving 10, 20 miles down the rail at one time and, and filming with a film camera out in front of the windshield. So we saw this happening. So we said, you know, why can't we launch a drone? We drive down the railway, we get a wider picture of the rail so they can uh, look at the railroad tracks and railroad ties and see if there's any damaged areas. A common occurrence in our state are tropical storms or hurricanes. Usually one of the big problems with hurricanes in North Carolina is the amount of flooding that we get. We're able to use drones to help with rapid assessment of damage to our infrastructure. We're always looking for how to leverage newer technologies and newer tools to help get things done faster, cheaper, safer. And I know how hard we've worked to push the envelope and leverage and show what these things can do. Drones in the future of these tools and this technology is going to surpass what man flight has done in fact, sometimes when you stop and think, 115 years later from 1903 and the very beginnings, it's um, remarkable to think about uh, how aviation has evolved. If the Wright brothers were here now, uh, what would they think of aviation? I, I think they'd be amazed.